Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover creating some custom button actions in Rails 7. This is going to be a beginner focused tutorial because I've seen quite a few questions about this on Reddit and other places. Uh, just sort of how do you create a button that does some type of custom logic that's not, you know, the basic four actions we all know, the create, read, update, destroy. Maybe you need some kind of custom logic. And of course, we've done this in videos in the past, but I haven't made a dedicated video that covers this. So to get started, we're just going to create a new project. I'm just going to call mine video and then we can uh, go from there. Now, uh, I do want to point out if there's some custom logic you want to do, you have two options. If you think you can get away without using the server, you can use JavaScript with a stimulus controller. And if you need the server for something, then you're going to have to do like a button tag or a link to or something similar. Uh, of course, if you want to like tie the two together, you're always welcome to do that. Uh, we're just going to get started by creating a scaffold, I guess, because that'll let us uh, tie it into what exists already. We can, of course, do this with with pretty much anything. I'm just going to create a post scaffold and we're going to say, I don't know, this has a title and a body of type text something like that. We can go ahead and we can run this. That'll generate it. We can then do our DB migrate and then we can open this up in our text editor of choice. In my case, that's going to be Visual Studio Code. So I guess the plan here is maybe we create like a thumbs up button or something just so you can see how you can create some custom logic. So uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll, oops, we'll start the server with a Rails S, come over to localhost port 3000. We can then come over to our side panel, go into config and our routes.rb because we want to change the root of our application to be the uh, post controller. Oops, post controller and the index action. That'll take us here. We can then come over to our routes and we're good to go. So I think what would be good is if we create a separate controller and then we just uh, maybe thumbs up a post from that controller, I guess is, is one way to look at this. So we'll come in here, we'll do a Rails G controller, we'll call it pages, we'll create a home page just like that. And then we'll do a Rails S again, which of course means we want to change this, uh, this route to be the pages controller and the home action. That way that's our home page instead of this index. And then we can create a new post by clicking on new post. Uh, and then in here, we'll just say this is like test and case or something. So we'll create that. Now, if we come over to our home page, we can see that there's nothing here. So from this home page, I want to create a button that just does something on the back end and then, uh, you know, something happens, right? So if we come into our app views pages in our home page, in here, we can create something like a uh, button tag or a button to the button will be to uh, upvote first post. And this will take us to uh, the upvote post path, it'll take in a at post. So we'll figure out what this logic means in a minute here. I'm kind of doing this off the cuff. Uh, and then it has a method of put, uh, but this isn't, it really depends on what you want here. There's also a patch method and a post method. And you can see the HTTP verbs. Uh, there are the post, get, put, patch and delete. These correspond to, so post is going to be your create, read is going to be your get, update is going to be your put, delete is going to be your delete, of course, and then patch is also going to be for your update. And you can see that in your controllers. If you come into your post controller, you can see they have the verb at the start here. So these are all gets, then your create is your post. Uh, and then your patch slash put is your update and your delete is your destroy. So there is a little bit of overlap here, really depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, but in our case, what we wanna do is we just want to create this, this button that allows us to upvote a specific post. Now we do have to figure out what at post is gonna be. So in our pages controller, we'll just say at post is equal to the post dot first. So if you don't have a first post, this is gonna error out. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. You can, of course, do a check to make sure that you at least have one. Um, but in our case, this is kind of just hacked together, so it really doesn't matter. So maybe you say like, uh, if only do this, if uh, post.any, there we go. 
something like that. So now if there's any posts, then you'll be able to do this. Otherwise you won't have a at post to work with. So we, we do this, but now if we come over here and we actually refresh, right, we're gonna run into an error. So this error right here tells us we don't have this upvote post path right here. So what we have to do is we have to come back into our routes and we have to actually define a, oops, a route for the upvote post path. And this is a post method, I think we said, or I, I guess it had put here initially, right? So we grab this put and we come over here for the put method, right? So then we say, okay, this is gonna be a put to post slash ID slash upvote. So this is your, your controller here. Let me just do this so it's a bit clear. This is your controller here. So that corresponds to your post controller. It takes in an ID, which is very similar to how these posts here work. So remember, if you go to something like slash post slash ID, this corresponds to slash post slash one, for example. So in this case, it's gonna be similar. It's gonna be uh, slash post slash ID, oops, colon ID slash upvote takes you to post slash one slash upvote, right? And then right here we can see, this is telling us where this is going to. So this is like the format for your URL. This is the controller and the action you're going to, or the controller and the method that you're gonna run, if you wanna think of it like that. So we have the upvote method in the post controller, but maybe we wanna put this in the pages controller. So we can do that. We can change this to the pages and the upvote. Uh, but then we have this as right here, and this is where you kind of want to be a little bit consistent. So this is going to be your as, uh, this is going to be the upvote underscore post underscore path. And this corresponds to basically what these posts do for us. And if we if we recall, the, the scaffold out of the box is going to create some routes for us if we come over to the index, where we have like the new post path or the new tweet path or whatever it kind of this word right here corresponds to whatever the the controller and the model are so it really wouldn't be great if we change this to be the pages controller but we left this to have the post right here so maybe we want to say the upvote page path uh of course it's a little counterintuitive in this case because we are actually changing a post so bear with me it's it doesn't really make a ton of sense to, to call it this, but we're doing it for the sake of learning. Uh, in an actual application, you probably wanna keep this in, in your posts path instead of your page, right? But let's come over to our home page again. So we now have this upvote page path, right? Because this right here should correspond to what we have right here, which is the upvote underscore page, and then underscore path gets added to the end of it. So we come over here and we refresh now, you'll see the button works, or at least it shows up, we no longer get that error. But if we click this button and we scroll up a bit, we, we should start to see these errors, which is a good thing, because that means that we're heading in the right direction. And here it tells us the action was not found. So the action upvote could not be found in the pages controller. So we have to go declare this action. So we come into our pages controller, we can just say def, and then we, we need the upvote action right here. So we can just copy that, paste it right here, and then say end. And now at this point from our home page, we are passing this at post. Uh, but what does that actually look like? Well, the way we can check is if we have this upvote, we can actually just do a puts and then puts the params. And then if we come in here and we hit enter a bunch of times, if we now click this button, we'll see that we have this action. We don't have to refresh the page because it happens on the back end. But we have this action, it takes us to started put, which is slash post slash one slash upvote. It does some processing stuff. A lot of this is noise, but here we get those parameters that we just console logged out or that we put out, right? And we can see in here, it comes with an authenticity token, which doesn't matter. And then it has an ID of one. And that ID is coming from this at post. So it's grabbing this model and passing back the ID. So that means that what we can do here is we can actually say, okay, let's grab the ID of one. And maybe we wanna put this inside of a string just so that we can uh, we can read this. We'll say ID is equal to that. And now if we hit enter here and we click this button again, you'll see our parameters are gone, but right here, well, I guess these parameters still come with it, uh, but right here we have the ID of one. So that means that if we do the params with the colon ID inside of the square brackets, we can get the, uh, the parameter that we need. 
So if we can get the ID of the post, we can then access it and we can update it, right? So we can say at post is equal to post.find and then you can find the uh, post by its ID. At this point, we can then do something like maybe we want to put the at post dot, I think it has a title or something. So at post dot title, we can then hit enter again. We'll click upvote post and we can see here that the test is appearing here from that post title. So that's pretty cool, but how do we actually update it? Well, we have the post, we can just say at post dot, and then we have to, to change the, the upvote counter, right? Now it doesn't have an upvote counter. So what we have to do is we have to stop our server and say rails uh, g migration, add upvotes to post, and then we'll give each post, oops, we'll give each post a upvote of type integer, right? Now, of course, this is gonna be a little bit hacked together because we're, we're only updating the post, we're not, or we're only upvoting the post, we're not uh, doing anything else. But for the sake of this, it's, it's good enough, right? So if we now come in here and we do a Rails DB colon migrate, and then we run a Rails S again, we can start our server. We can come in here and we can say at post dot upvotes, and maybe we want to console log this. So say puts at post dot upvotes. And then if we do this, we can come up here and we'll see that hopefully nothing actually uh, shows up here when we refresh, but if we click the button, we can see that our undefined method upvotes for the post here is an issue. So we have an upvote, which is singular. That's probably on me for calling it that. Uh, but if we in here uh, refresh and click this button again, so we click the button, we can see that nothing's being console logged out. The, the thing is with how we generated this migration, we have a uh, empty upvote initially. Now you can set a default in your migration so if you come into DB migrate and this last one right here, you have this uh, post column with the upvotes and the integer. You can also, oops, you can also say this has a default of zero if you want to initialize it like that, but then you have to make sure you do that before you run this migration or you have to run another migration to change the default. It's really not ideal. So instead what you can do is you can just come in here and you can say, in this case, uh, maybe we want to do at post dot increment and then you can increment the upvote now this is slightly different to at post dot update right because if you update something then you're gonna have to tell it what you're updating so we'll take a look at the increment first so we'll do this and then maybe uh, on the home page right here we can just say um, this has and then we'll say pluralize uh, at post dot views dot count and then we'll say view, oops upvotes something like that and then we'll say at post dot upvote dot count and it has that many upvotes right so this will change based on how many upvotes we have uh, oops this actually needs to just be at post dot upvote uh, this will change based on how many upvotes it has so every time we click the button in theory if it's updating it this should change. So if we click this button, we can see here we updated the post. We set the upvote to be the coalesce upvote zero plus and then plus one basically, which changes it to one. So now if we refresh the page, you can see this has one upvote. We can click it again and it has two upvotes. But you'll notice we have to refresh the page when we do this because this happens on the back end and we're not actually doing anything to the front end, which might be what you want to do. But what you can actually do is come into your pages controller if you want to change this and then you could say, all right, we're done here. Now let's redirect to wherever we want to go after we press the button. So now if we click this button, it'll refresh the page for us. So if we come in here, we click this button, you can see that our request changes quite a bit. We start with the put, it updates the model as, as expected, and then it tells us, okay, hey, we got a 302, which means we have to redirect back to localhost port 3000. Once we redirect, we then do another GET request. We get the processing, blah, 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 and nobody cares. So that's sort of how you can do that. Now, the alternative here is what happens if we want to do a downvote action. We can just very quickly do this. It's going to be very similar. We take in another at post. We take in a uh, at post dot decrement upvote, and then we redirect to the root path. We take this downvote, go into the routes. We're just going to copy this upvote path right here change this to a downvote. This is going to be the pages downvote action, and it's going to be the as downvote page. 
We can then come into the home page, grab this upvote, change this to a down vote, change this to a down vote. And that should be good. And then we come over here and we change this from a, well, I guess we leave it as a put. You could make this a delete, but in this case, you can also just leave it as a put. So if we now refresh the page, we also get this down vote post right here. So what we can do is we can click that and you can see this is decrementing it. So because we have the decrement option here, it goes down when we click that, it goes up when we click this. So maybe you use this more like a, a clap or an applaud button, similar to what medium does as opposed to upvotes and downvotes because they're not unique. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea. And of course you can extend this to anything you'd like. It's uh, really just a matter of whatever you can think of. You just create some kind of button, you tell it where it needs to go, and then once it gets there, you tell it what it needs to do. And I think this is a pretty big blocker for a lot of people because out of the box, this doesn't seem to be covered super well. Uh, it's sort of what is implicitly done in the scaffold. Like if we come over to the show page here, we get the button, which takes us to like the at post, or we get the, you know, the, the back button, which takes us to the post path. But it, it's not entirely clear how you do something like with the edit post out of the box with a scaffold, which is why a lot of tutorials tend to like really focus and stress on going to the edit page, which then takes you to the update action. Uh, but I feel like it does separate it a bit too much to sort of make it coherent for what's actually happening. So hopefully this does end up clearing something up for, for some people. Uh, I know for a lot of people, this is probably pretty, uh, pretty low level beginner stuff, but we all have to start somewhere. Uh, and if you asked me to do this probably like two years ago, I probably still would have been a little confused on how to do it. It's really only because I've done this hundreds of times now in these videos uh, that I'm comfortable doing this without, uh, without a dry run beforehand. So don't feel too bad if you still have to look this stuff up occasionally. It, it happens to all of us. That's why we have access to the internet uh, and we don't you know, restrict uh, the access to Google and like the workspace. Although we do in interviews for some reason, but that's besides the point. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope you got something out of this and I hope I will see you in the next video.